Hello and welcome to Warlord Games Monday Musings. Today we are joined once again by Alessio, writer of many things, including Bolt Action, Warhammer 40k, and uh, yeah, welcome back on the show. Yeah, it's uh, good good to have you back and uh, good to see you both looking so stylish. Turn mine off, there you go. <laughs> are we taking the, are we taking the glasses off, the corporate glasses off? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay mm, remove the glasses <laughs> okay <clears throat> hello thank you for having me again for round two take two <laughs> Adrian, Adrian. <laughs> yes. i didn't hear no bell <laughs> <laughs> so you take two over and two over so what are we talking about today guys besides amazing philadelphia movie quotes um, so we are talking about a little bit of the fan reaction from uh, the first stream. There's a little bit of feedback we wanted to pick up on, some uh, concerns perhaps we wanted to waylay and some uh, some scores we wanted to set straight. And on the same topic of a lot of people were concerned with the future of Bolt Action. There was a lot of people uh, worried in that thread. So we thought, well, let's turn this into an opportunity to actually hear what you guys want. There's a lot of good suggestions. We've been taking comments. I've got the uh, thread here with all you guys' comments here. So we've got a lot to be getting through. Plus, we will be taking uh, live order... Sorry, not orders. <laughs> questions. <laughs> I've been on the phones too much today. Um, <laughs> we'll be taking live questions. Marcus is handling the Twitch chat today because I'm focusing on the Zoom. Let us know if there's any... Uh, uh, thing you want to ask live. So uh, shall we start off with, before we jump into the questions, a little bit of the backstory about uh, what spurred us to do round two. Yeah, absolutely. But from uh, from my point of view was I did the, the, the interview with you guys and then I looked at the at the video, uh, recorded and I started to read the comments on Facebook and stuff and uh, it was... Uh, Always a questionable decision. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite interesting. I... I for a start, lots of enthusiasm, great, mm -hmm. fantastic, very motivating. At the same time, a lot of uh, kind of fear of, of the future, <laughs> fear change kind of thing. And it was like, uh, it also, it's infectious because basically seeing that much fear of, no, oh, no, don't break bolt action, it's great, I love it as it is, don't do anything. And as a designer, you go, ooh, I don't, ooh, oh, I don't want to touch this, you know, it's like, whatever, because whatever you do, you're going to upset some people and please some other people, and you go like, ooh. so, you know, the best thing to do would be to do nothing, uh, no risk. Uh, of course, at some stage in the future, Warlord will um, will come to a, to a season three, uh, season three, <laughs> season three, uh, 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 action version three. And this is, I suppose, the other thing we need to say was there was a lot of that. Uh, this is all decided. It's all done. It's all written, <laughs> and, and this is just a marketing ploy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wish it was. I wish it was. And of course, you guys may decide not not to believe me, and or believe the guys, not believe it us, <laughs> because of course, you know, this could be all fake news. But um, there's a lot of it on the internet. The, uh, and what I can say, um, I take it or leave it, is that no, indeed, there is no scheduled version <laughs> three, etc. There's a lot of chats about it, and obviously, we've been talking about it for the last two, three years. Is that when V two came out? Because I'm not actually been with the company that long. It was it was already V two when I showed up. Um, I don't even know. Yeah, those conversations happens. The, yeah. the lockdown didn't suddenly speed up those conversations, made them more difficult because obviously it's easier when you're meeting with people to talk about this kind of stuff. But uh, so as far as I know, it's not on the schedule. We're still talking about it, collecting ideas. Uh, we are at that stage, collecting ideas, which makes this all very valuable in terms of you know, like you know, I throw some of the ideas I have about what I would like to do. You guys have shared a lot of ideas of what we like to do. Um, so. This is what it is, is we're talking about what we like, what we don't like, what we like to change, what we don't like, we wouldn't want to change, and uh, it's a all very up in the air, find the sky, design considerations, <laughs> high level design. <laughs> uh, so it's just that there is no clever marketing ploy or anything, uh, in a way, like you were saying, guys, we, you know, we wish we were that well organized. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Fa fairly safe to say uh, much ado about not a great deal um, but uh, uh, yeah, I kind of said a very nice opportunity for us to go hey people do have a lot to say 
people do have lots of ideas, let's have a chat about it. Let's let's do our bolt action think tank. Yeah, I know a lot of people uh, have had a chance to play test some of these. Some of these have been going around for a while. Um, I was uh, supposed to be before lockdown playtesting some stuff about MMGs. I know that's a hot button issue at the moment. But uh, um, so, should we just jump in some of the uh, pre arranged questions through the Bolt Action Facebook page? We can kick it off with the MMGs. I mean, that is probably the, the top te- topic, isn't it? The mm-hmm. top topic. <laughs> that. Um, MMGs, yes. <laughs> They're not good enough. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think we all agree. Uh, as in. Obviously, in reality, thanks God I've never been shot at <laughs> with anything. Well, water pistols, <laughs> more than that. So I don't know, but from what I read, from the films I've seen, from what, what I, uh, you know, I talk to people that have been sadly in combat, and they tell me, of course, the machine guns are terrifying thing. Oh yeah, uh, and yeah, particularly belt fed ones, um, and uh, so. The game, they're not bad, but probably they could be better. And between Bolt Action 1 and Bolt Action 2, we certainly did make them better. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's a big caveat to all of this. What we did with Bolt Action 2 was change the rules that then change the point values of machine guns because all the books remained, the, the, all the army books, etc., had to be compatible with version 2. We couldn't yeah. change the point values. So there was an, an impossibility. So mm-hmm. instead of changing the point values to make machine guns cheaper, we had to make them better, change the rules, which are the rule books, because I couldn't touch the, the army books. So, assuming that that's the same, and maybe not true, because maybe yeah. we'll decide, what we decide to do, so I, I don't have a clue, but let's assume <laughs> that the books are still compatible, and therefore we, we don't talk about points values, we talk about rules. Um, how to make machine guns better? I wouldn't change anything radically because then you risk to break the game. You have the pendulum, but like, you know, oh, machine guns are not good enough, and suddenly <laughs> it's all about how many machine guns you can put. At which the point the Americans with. become the best army in the game because they get three. <laughs> machine gun, Death Stars, and stuff, <laughs> Germans, I don't know. But basically, you gotta go, right, okay, no, uh, let's not do wild changes. So the, the simplest thing to do, in theory, I mean, if you think, if machine guns had a thousand shots, Instead of five or six, <laughs> it would be fantastic. So there exists a number where people would go, Ooh, I think that were, you know, at the moment, five shots, maybe not good enough. A thousand shots, really good. <laughs> Somewhere in between, there is a number that would make us go, Yeah, you got <laughs> it. <laughs> it. We don't know. So, in theory, I could go, Next edition of the I'll keep adding. Plus one, one more, one more shot, two more shots. <laughs> it's like, at what point do we say these are good enough? That's the simplest thing mm-hmm. to do. That's I think uh, one that I see quite a lot is the potential of adding pins uh, to the MMGs. I personally think that'd be a good uh, representation of how, you know, a machine gun might not necessarily wipe out a whole squad because they have the sense to uh, hit the deck and find cover, but you're more likely to stay down when there's a machine gun uh, shooting at you. So I've seen, I know the, um, I believe it was the Spanish bolt action team. I think some of the guys from South End, they were play testing, keeping the shots, but just as little as adding D2 pins. So a 50-50 of doubling up your pins per hit on a squad gives them a little bit more purpose because suddenly they're this direct fire um, pinning machine. So kind of like a mortar, but you've got a more chance of instant gratification for less H E boom on the tabletop. So that's one I've seen thrown around. I'm a. Uh, I need to actually get a game and play test that because uh, unfortunately my opponents are always going. But Max, you take three machine guns. I'm not letting you take that for free. <laughs> Interesting because uh, when we did version one to version two, mm-hmm. the same conversation happened. Okay. At this very same conversation because of course we decided we, we in version one we said machine guns are not really good enough. We need to make them better, and we did eventually by adding. A, just the dice. Uh, but at the time, this conversation came up and we did play test quite thoroughly with the different um, okay. uh, higher amount of pinning. Mm-hmm. Uh, we actually never did the D2, uh, to be honest. Uh, the, we did D3 uh, and uh, we tried D3 on MMGs and nothing on the on the LMGs. But basically, we, yeah. we tried several combinations and stuff to see what yeah. that did to the game. Eventually, we decided not to go that way because okay. uh, Andrew Chesney, remember, used to work with <laughs> Warlord, uh, you know, proved the point by going 
spamming it because that's what you need to do when yeah. you do good play testing. You know, when you're doing some good play testing, you just like take it to the extreme and say, you know, if somebody takes this to the extreme, and so the, there was these arm, the, the where these armies were basically the amount of pinage, <laughs> is the word, <laughs> not a pinning that was mm -hmm. spread over the made the game really slow. There was a lot of basically you failed incredibly. Okay, it's incredible how much you know just failing quite a few more tests means it's so frustrating that your squads are not moving. So it's suddenly, I think that the amount of an effect of pinning was too high. Maybe because we're using D3s instead of D2s, maybe D2 would be a good thing. On the other end, if you go D2, then what you're doing is you're adding a roll, and 50% of the times that roll does nothing. Yeah. So you're kind of adding a roll to the sequence that most of the time doesn't do well not most 50 percent of the time does nothing. Uh, depends on so, if you're using my dice <laughs> so it's you're adding a thing and not achieving a, a heavy effect which you know is mm -hmm. good in terms of balance in terms of not having too much pinning which was what we experienced with yeah. uh, the d3s uh, but on the other end of course you're adding a, another step etc where hence the conversation that happened between mm -hmm. ba1 and ba2 was you know what? Let's just add a just a dice because you know is yeah. better is better than before. <laughs> is it good enough? I think the answer after be two is like no, not not quite. Is that another dice enough? Is it? I don't know. Maybe two dice more. I I don't know. Mm. Or maybe <laughs> a completely different thing. But see, the completely different thing is dangerous. Has dangers in it while increasing mm -hmm. the points, increasing the, the shots. It's very literal. Yeah, Everybody understands what's going on there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very literal. It's not difficult to understand. It's very simple to implement. Just pick up the dice, pick up an extra die roll. So it, it flows and it makes them better. So I instinctively go there as the first mm -hmm. solution. I'm very happy to try the D2. And indeed, let's hope that we uh, will meet again <laughs> in person at some stage. And yeah, I, I'll try the yeah. D2 because, I, again, I, I don't think we tried D2 correctly. I think it was only D3 that we tried. So maybe D2 is the perfect medium and with play that we go, wow, this is fantastic, yes. But yeah, basically, I'm, what I'm saying is adding dice easy, uh, trying the D2, yeah, let's try. Because again, mm -hmm. the best thing to do is always to try these things, spam it and see what happens. And uh, <laughs> yeah, let's try. Uh, the only other thing that I'll say is I find the machine gun vehicles are too good, particularly too good in comparison mm -hmm. with machine guns on, mm -hmm. on the ground. And I think maybe we already said this in the previous episode, so we don't want to repeat ourselves, but yeah. definitely I think I want to hit the ones on vehicles with a big shtick <laughs> <laughs> because they are too good. They're mm -hmm. just too good. I mean, it's a, again, from what I know from reality, they were not nowhere near as effective as a tripod mounted one served by, you know, three, four guys. <laughs> you know, the yeah. difference between three, four guys serving a piece of, of ordnance that is you know has a good visibility is nice and well placed a good mm -hmm. view good line of fire etc as opposed to you're in a tank <laughs> on the radio driving the thing and bouncing <laughs> like this and your vision is this much well, the, the, the shermans for example they didn't even have a vision slot you had to poke your head out and shoot from the hip <laughs> and there were, like there were a load of them that, there were a load that didn't even have a traverse in the whole machine gun, you pointed the tank and you got a single line. And um, just to check chat, hopefully my mic is now coming through okay. Haggard saying a little bit quiet. I've just bumped the volume up in my internal mix. You sound fine to us, by the way. So Swear. sweet, perfect. And I just want to say quickly as well, hello to everyone joining us, seeing a lot of familiar faces and a lot of new people as well, which is really cool. Yeah, I can't see the chat today, so hello everyone. Nice to see you guys along. Hello. Hey, brilliant, and that seems to have fixed it. Cool. Okay, um, so yeah, that was about it. Machine gun, yes, needs to be better. Yes, we'll try the extra pinning. I'm a bit wary, but we'll try it, and uh, we'll yeah. see. I mean, yeah. So I think we're going to start just plowing through some of the Facebook questions, then we'll hop into some of the Twitch questions if we're getting them, Marcus. Um, so uh, I'm going to yeah. try and quick fire these quite fast. Sorry, 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 Ooh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Before we start yep. with that, should we just quickly address the old uh, hit modifiers? <laughs> oh yes, big, yeah. <laughs> that seems to be the big thing that happened the last time. Uh, the, the sky was falling a little bit. There. Is, is okay if we do that mm -hmm. now? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. So basically, there was this thing where uh, you know I listened to the video, I watched the video, and I go, "Go, have I said that I want to remove all modifiers from from bolt action?" Because I was thinking, "Where did I say that? Why did I say that?" Because 
that thought never entered my mind. So why would I? Maybe I said something that I didn't mean. So, so I, I watched the video again. I go, I didn't quite say that. <laughs> what I said was, I would like to make the math simpler. I would like to reduce the amount of math one has <laughs> to do so that uh, basically, you know, in some ways, I don't know exactly how, removing maybe a few modifiers, <laughs> not all modifiers, <laughs> maybe a few modifiers could be removed and replaced with things like saving throws or other things, you know, modifiers of the limited movement. So there's different ways of representing the same thing that other than a modifier on the roll to hit. Mm. And so I basically said, well, I like to reduce some of the maths, maybe a bit like we did in 40k. And that I think was a key phrase that I should never have said. <laughs> because that that was read as exactly like we did in 40k. I removed all modifiers. I was like, no, 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 no that's not what I meant. Simplifying a bit, reducing a couple of modifiers, yes. And Mm. Why? I mean, I've seen lots of people say, "Oh, well, the game is simple," you know, and people will, uh, people that cannot do that are simple people, and uh, there's something wrong with them. So I, I was like, "No, I'm sorry, yeah. guys, I have to disagree." <laughs> As in, I played in tournaments, top player, the best players in the world that kick my ass all over the place. And, you know, we had this, we had this, lots and lots of games. I, I got to tournaments, but you know. I've seen it happening to the most grizzled, seasoned, intelligent people. I'm pretty sure they weren't simple tones. Where <laughs> to me, to them, you know, hit a battle, game five, you're really tired. Uh, there's a time pressure. The, the, you're thinking about a million things, and you shoot, and there's a submachine gun, and the machine gun, and a BAR, and a thing, and they're firing at the same time, and you do, and you get it wrong. You just go plus one, plus one, minus one, minus one, this one doesn't play minus one, there's a fives, roll, blah, 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 blah. Keep playing. There's an important game. And then two turns later, you go, <gasps> <laughs> yep. Oh, God. I didn't. Uh. So either <laughs> I, I cheated, as in I, I didn't apply something that favored me, or the other way around, so I ruined myself. I, I, I forgot a plus one to hit. Ah! Yeah, something like that. Or indeed, I cheated. I didn't apply the modifier for moving. You know, I was like, "Oh my god!" So it happens. It happens to everybody. It's not <laughs> being simple, and, and therefore, if I remove the bit of that, I think the game will be faster, flow better. And you know, if I could do that without breaking the game, you know, you know being very aware that adding a, a saving throw, a cover thing, it's a big thing. It's a big thing. Yeah, it, it mm. certainly adds a step to the dice rolling. It has advantage. It has these advantages. This advantage of obviously that's another step, makes that longer, but also the advantage of interacting. Some people like that, you know, the here's the dice, give me the dice, ha, save, etc. So there's a fun in it. Uh, so advantages, disadvantages is a way of doing it, it's not the only yeah. way of doing it. <laughs> uh, so again, is that play testing and trying, you know, like, oh well, what if there was, you know, example, what if the, I'm not saying that I'm doing this. <laughs> <That's an example. laughs> There's no mo there's no modifier for I don't know range, mm -hmm. and you go right. Okay, what does that do to the game? Because you kind of assume that you could go up, you could rationalize it saying, well, you know, that's optimal. The game happens at optimum optimum range, mm -hmm. and yeah. that actually fits better the scale if you want, you know, because actually thinking this rifle doesn't <laughs> hit up to twelve inches because the miniature is two inches tall, it just doesn't really look right. So you go, mm -hmm. okay, so let's say that. We don't worry about range. Everything is in optimal range. Mm -hmm. The scale actually works better. And the parries will not complain that they that the ranges are wrong when I play on their 12 by 8 table. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, this all doesn't work. This game doesn't work. It's like, well, it's designed to be played on a 6 by 4, not on a 12 by 8. So it doesn't quite work on this table. Um, anyways, so say for a sake of argument that we say, okay, there's no range modifier. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, that has effect on the game and the way you play and uh, makes it in a way more so less sophisticated from the point of view of you don't have the okay if i advance six inches i get in shorter range but i am moving so the, the modifiers neutralize each other but maybe my uh, tank weapon gets more powerful and then maybe next turn and you start to think so of course i'm aware that that's a simplification and what that does to your thinking and to your strategy and yeah. that's why when we try all of these things we always test them Sometimes you find not quite satisfactory, and I don't like it. Sometimes mm -hmm. you go, no, actually, this works fine. It's 
as flows the same. So, and then you try, okay, let's see if we remove the, the moving modifier, what happens? Oh, it's a big change. Like if everybody had the American rule, <laughs> you, know, you go, all right, okay. So yeah. that encourages, encourages people to move more. Good thing. But it makes it slightly tactical. Bad thing. So there's, you know, every change you make has advantages, disadvantages, and we weigh them and we try them and we feel both rationally, competitively, whether we think it's a good change or a bad change. I, I would like to remove some maths. We'll try. If the game is equally as cool and entertaining, etc., maybe we'll do it. Maybe we won't bother because we think that actually is making it worse rather than better. So no, fine. So, but yeah, that, that, that is where we are. That is, you know, what, what I'm thinking. And I think that's a really important thing for people to bear in mind, especially given the conversation that happened on Facebook and other places of after the last one, of when, you know, when you say or when anyone at Warlord kind of says, oh, we're thinking about doing something. We're thinking about making some kind of change. It's not just, oh, let's just do it. We're thinking about it. It's going to be, we're going to be playtesting it. There's going to be these kind of discussions that are happening at the very top with people like yourselves yeah, it, it's okay. We're not just going to randomly go, eh, it's Tuesday. Let's take cover saves. Let's put cover saves in bolt action. See what happens. Um, or at least if we do that, it'll be us doing it to see what happens before we give it to anyone else. And sometimes you make those decisions and, you know, I have discussion with Rick about it and, uh, and we disagree and it's very <laughs> tough to make the call because you can see all the arguments in favor of one thing. I have a perfect example, actually. Mm. Version one to version two cover uh, so they're, they're, going, they're going to ground bonus going from minus one to minus two that was really a big difficult thing for me and i'm to this day i'm not sure that i think minus one is better than minus two to be honest i think minus one and a half is where it needs to be <laughs> but unfortunately there is no minus one and a half unless we go on d10 but so i'm kind of going hmm. minus one doesn't <laughs> cut it quite enough for me minus two seems a bit too much hmm. so hmm. there is that thing where Try this way, try the other way, decide to go this way after a lot of trying, and still you look at it and go, should we come back to minus one? <laughs> you know, it, it, it's that not, there is no right and wrong yeah. answer. Yeah, it's a matter of yeah. taste. And yeah. and yeah, Amish in the chat, bang on. Exactly correct, mate. <laughs> oh, is that Amish in the chat? Amish, I, I sent you the invoice. I'm pretty sure it was you <laughs> I was talking to you today. Um, I've got a big bag of metals next door. <laughs> <laughs> I could probably get my desk and waggle them. Yeah, literally um, with your name on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, plenty of good stuff um, coming up in the chat. A lot of it's quite specific and quite um, you know focused on a particular thing. Um, but we've got plenty of good stuff there, as well as all the things that are in the Facebook thread. So keep them coming, folks. We obviously will. We can't promise we'll get to all of them because there's a lot of you. Let's do it. I'll stop talking. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm only going to do first names if they're on Facebook so I don't reveal their identities. But Will's already asked something about the machine guns, so we'll skip over that. Um, rebalancing heavy tanks. This is one that I've seen played at tournaments occasionally. I know South End, they do about, I think, 20% just flat off anything heavy or super heavy. Um, I don't know. That's one that I'd be interested in because I've got my IS-2 and my KV-1s. They're always sat there and I'm going, can I justify 350 points though? But they So that's one that I'd be curious to see. Yeah, hmm. I agree. I think the, super, the, the, the heavier, the more expensive a thing becomes, the more of a gamble it is. And therefore, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a thing with all war games. Mm -hmm. uh, quantity as a quality, like the Russians used to say, uh, as a quality of the film. And it's true. And it's true. You just go... A lot of cheap stuff. It always feels always stronger than 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 small elite big things because in a way, it is that you know you're invulnerable. But then there's the one lucky shot. You know, and my my, my little Stuart took out Panthers and things. You're gonna just like, yeah, yeah, get in the back. And it's shoot, it's like. a higher potential damage if you've got. 50 bodies that might do something where 20 bodies that will probably be too you've got more of a gamble there kind of thing absolutely. Mm. speaking course, as a soviet player <laughs> absolutely and, and of course point values would be a simple answer to that mm -hmm. uh then i could make the progression in cost i have like a, a chart a matrix where i go you know i start to buy the chassis x points mm -hmm. depending on the armor value and then you add weapons and that adds value to it i can certainly bring the extremes a bit closer in 
but actually more like on the top end, <laughs> just leave yeah. the, the bottom end <laughs> as it is, but bring this side on and just make, you know, uh, just heavy big stuff a bit cheaper. A few points cheaper. That, that would be simple, but mm. I don't know again whether I'll be able to change the points values. That's not been decided yeah. yet. <laughs> so um, if I can, maybe it's just a case of rebalancing the points, yes. Uh, knowing the bit that needs to be squashed, the side of the equation that is uh, If it isn't, then we'll have to look at the rules. So make them tougher. Um, one interesting thing we did, I mean, the, the, um, the speaking of big vehicles, the, I've seen that question coming up as well, was the difference between a, a, a one with a turret and one without a turret. And then again, it would have been simpler to say, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, in the original point count calculation, they cost the same. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a, a Stug and a, and a Panzer IV with the same weapon configuration, they cost the same. You go, well, clearly the... the, the, the the tank is better because it's got yeah. a turret, so it doesn't have the, the arc of fire is, is bigger. So, but they don't pay points for that. And that was a version one problem in version two because again, you couldn't change the points value because the simple solution is like, well, okay, the turret is more expensive than the yeah. Yeah. turret version. Couldn't do that. So instead, we said, all right, make the turret version again, kind of a following history. The turret is better. On the other end, the disadvantage is. That it can go wrong, it can get stuck, it can, you know, something can go wrong in the mechanics of, of, of the rotation thing. And therefore, the, the, the stack turret rule came in to make it basically not to make, instead of making the, the Stug cheaper, we made the, 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 the tank more fragile in a way. Yeah. So, uh, maybe not enough. Maybe again, the, the difference should have been more. Uh, uh, there is a, in the real line of sight thing, there is a reality thing where actually the profile of the tank is higher, therefore it is more vulnerable, very realistic. Um, but yeah, it's a very subtle thing depending on how you do line of sight. So mm. again, maybe, maybe not enough. Something that suddenly we will look at that. Yes, so I, I, we are aware the big, big, big cats, big tanks tend to be a bit uh, not competitive, I would say, not as competitive as... Yeah. As I do think it's interesting. I was uh, I was talking to someone on the phone uh, last week, um, and his meta actually goes the other way. They don't like seeing heavy tanks. They were saying, you know, would you ever consider writing a competitive system where you ban those because we think they're a little bit overpowered? No? So I think even with the consensus being a lot of people feel heavy tanks are nerfed, um, some people already still feel just the fact that it is a tiger, even if it is that high... Uh, risk uh, option. Some people still think they're a bit much for casual bolt action. So even if you did that, you might really upset some people going, they were already beating a soul up already, and now there's more tigers. Yep. Do you remember <laughs> what we said about whatever mm -hmm. you do, you're going to have some people say, yes, yes, absolutely, well done. You know, you made those tanks cheaper. And somebody's going, what have you done? You yeah. ruined the game. I'm not just saying I'm quitting. No, it's like... <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting as well, Alessia, you, you've kind of accidentally answered one we had in the Twitch as well, which was from Citizen G regarding will the rule books, when third edition eventually happens, will all the armies of books be rewritten? And the answer there is, well, I think it's fair to say you don't know. I don't know. It's a massive decision for a business. That, that's a massive business decision. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, it's not something I make. Thanks, God, for Warlord. I did the kind of decision for River Horse and not for Warlord, uh, where, you know, it's a big thing. Because then, of course, you have, like, you have to say to people, right, now we would like the, to refresh everything, and therefore we need to change the points values and everything. So, therefore, we need to overrule the, the army books. And, you know, it's for a good reason. Because we want to make this change that you guys have been asking for for years, you know, of uh, the points values. Etc. The only way to do that is, unfortunately, to uh, to then say, well, we need to issue a new edition of these books. And some people will love that. I will go, ah, finally. And some people will go, what have you done? I have to build. So it's a tough decision for a business because you're kind of damned if you do that if you don't and uh, i don't envy the people that have to make that decision when the time <laughs> comes to be honest um so depending on what the decision is going to be will go one way other points values will be part of the, the rebalancing if not then rules will have to do the job of, uh, of rebalancing but again i don't know which one is going to be to say nothing of the fact it's been quite expensive to republish all the books, so uh, yeah, it's oh, a gotcha. big thing. It's a huge thing. It's yeah, a huge thing. It's a huge We'd have risk. to hire some new people who know how to read and write to write them as well. <laughs> I, think, I think that's a good kind of example as well of how it's not when you're doing rules. It's not just what the designer, what someone like Alessio and the playtesting team think is 
the best. There are external considerations like business factors that may put limits on exactly what you can do and what you can't do. You know, you might be told you can't do this, even though you think, but no, this will make it the best game ever. This will make it the perfect war game. If the business says it doesn't work for us, you've got to work around that. Yeah. That, must, that must be its own pretty unique. Yeah, it's challenge. like when I it's like when I propose to put a um, laser pointer inside every barrel of every kit, every plastic kit, so you could actually see the rhino <laughs> effect coming straight out of the of the barrel. Yeah, they said it was too expensive. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. But for a certain type of modeler, I think you've just given some people some bad ideas. <laughs> <laughs> see, th that's the real reason to take super heavies, like to kit Tiger Two. You get a laser line in the turret, no problem. Stum tag, you could fit a flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> whereas, whereas a Stuart, whereas a Stuart, see, there's a reason to stop taking them. You can't get yeah. a real laser in the turret. Right. So there's some more questions in here. I think a lot of them are just going to be the three of us aren't the sole answer for this one. Um, and some of it's, I think, it's a little bit semantic. But we got Erico here with the FG42 as an assault rifle. Oh, sorry, it's not an assault rifle. It's an automatic rifle. I mean that's. Again. Yeah, that, that's actually a very interesting one. Uh, not the only weapon where people have argued whether that should sit with a soft mm. rifle category or within the automatic rifle category, like a BAR. And I can see the cases of doing it one way or the other. Is that, again, that is when you create these bands and mm. you go, right, this sits here. Some of them are very obvious. Yeah. Some of them start to go, ooh, oh, you know, like the, the Garand. You know, you know, yeah. You know, the difference <laughs> between a bolt action rifle and something that has a clip and goes, six, six shot. <laughs> Depending how you read that, how you want to represent it in the rules, how time segments of what to turn, mm -hmm. there's very different ways of doing it. The difference between, I don't know, a brand gun or any, any machine gun, any light machine gun that is actually um, clip fed as opposed to a, to, to a belt fed. <laughs> you kind of go, yeah, the, the decision of where to sit them is. Sometimes difficult, and yes, I think we had that in mind uh, for potentially one day when we redo the <laughs> German book, because that's when you can do the change. You know, you cannot change it at any other time except when the if the German book is going to be remade. <laughs> is that's the point where you can do that mm. change at the moment? We can't. We cannot. Oh, I, I suppose we could errata it and go errata. Oh, you know, this weapon yeah. is change the profile of this weapon to this other yeah. thing. But that's against the philosophy of errata that uh, we tend to apply you know and, yeah uh, i have given you spiels about what i think about the erratas which is if something is not technically wrong this is arguably could be represented with a different profile but it's not like it's wrong yeah. literally it's wrong full stop uh, uh, then it's not an errata it's a change that you will keep in mind for the next edition which we will uh, this has been noted yes it's something that we are aware of <laughs> Um, and we're again from Erico here, um, and I think this one's partially answered. This will be on the tournament team, so I think uh, people like Paul Walker and uh, John Russell may have already considered this, but I'll get it out on the question as well. Uh, why not an army list book exclusively for tournament with uh, like official uh, tournament lists and standings? I think that partially comes under the tournament team and uh, things like that. I'm not sure I understand. Would you mean... Have armies of like now and on top of that another book which has armies. I believe so, but I th I person yeah that that's the question. I think this is more a question for um because I know John and Paul are working on dedicated tournament lists yeah. as it were. So I think this is I don't know. Uh, it, I mean, it depends. Yeah. If it's a it's a book of about tournaments with scenarios, which you get like these mm -hmm. are the competitive scenarios that with additional material, you know, with stuff to put mm -hmm. on top of the rules, yeah, I don't think that would be a bad thing. To have something that the, the main point of that, the the, 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 kind of the the basis of it is, oh yeah, we are going to fix this thing we don't think are correct in terms of balance, in terms mm -hmm. of point values, etc. We reissue armies. That, I think, is very strange uh, to me at least because it's kind of it's kind of telling your customers these army books here are wrong <laughs> what you should use is these these are more balanced they're gonna go but well, why are the first one balanced then in the first place it's like what what are you saying so it's a bit strange as a message i think uh, so basically what i'm saying is almost like a big giant errata book that and again you do that but then sadly in my experience doing that often it's just like moving the post 
yeah, you do that, and then the the hardcore gamers go in there and break that as well. So what, do you, what do you do? Another one? And go, oh, this one fixes the so house rules, tournament rules. Maybe in the tournament path, say we're playing these scenarios, but we're changing this because it's mm-hmm. too funky. We want it a bit more controlled, you know, a bit less chaotic and random. You know, like the remember the one with the escaping with the with the suitcase was a bit funny sometimes. <laughs> like, yeah, we decided to limit that a bit. But so maybe a tournament pack that does a few things like that, fixes a few scenarios to make them more balanced, more or less random, as a, mm-hmm. or, because you know less fun, <laughs> a bit more neutral. <laughs> uh, I can see an entire book that replaces parts of other books. I, I don't understand it very well. And I don't yeah. like it very well. But again, <laughs> uh, I have that, that, that's me. It's my taste, yes. Uh, yeah, Marcus, you got anything uh, in the Twitch chat? Yeah, there's um, there's a couple of ones here. Um, there's a few again. So one thing I just want to say to the chat very quickly um, is obviously Alessio wrote bolt action um, and, you know, lots of rules and things. Alessio didn't write every single campaign book. So if you've got specific questions about specific units from a campaign book, this may not be the best stream for it. Um, simply because between us we may just not know it may be well that's what the author thought um now one interesting one going back to mmgs because of course let's bring it back to mmgs (laughs) um from citizen g and a couple of other people have mentioned it as well would perhaps making them less vulnerable make them more valuable snipers being the big one that's pointed out a lot of a sniper can just take out a medium machine gun team. Yes, snipers actually is a very good point because uh, the ability of destroying a, a team with a single shot mm. again is something that you think, yeah, I mean, it's supposed to represent critical damage to the equipment itself. <laughs> you know, I'm there's a mortar team there, I can see the crate of ammunition, I can bang. If I'm lucky, <laughs> boom, yeah, how it goes. That's why it's unlikely to happen, but it, the possibility is there. Uh, and yes, I think toning down that effect of snipers, but maybe making them better at wounding. Because one thing that I find frustrating is when I my snipers hit, and I go, wow, oh, hit with a sniper. And then the guy goes, like, well, well, I need a four plus. He's like, this has been hit in the face by a sniper. He was like, you should be pretty much dead. He was like, they shouldn't be. So I'm, I'm thinking, better at wounding? Yeah, given the penetration, but uh, maybe at least bonuses against. Infantry, because then you don't want the sniper to go boom, boom tiger, tiger exploding. <laughs> so not literally making them into a heavy weapon, but making them better at killing stuff. Uh, uh, working on that, that killing, which is, I mean, the better at hitting at the moment. Maybe also the penetration, again, the killiness could be increased, but maybe removing the all destroy the team, and suddenly making teams better. Because that actually, yeah. I'll make a note. I have a <laughs> here. To, to demonstrate the fact that it's not all decided, <laughs> it's not making notes about the stuff we could do, like <laughs> making snipers better killing, but less good at uh, take you out, removing the old kill the team. Suddenly, you're right. Machine gun teams, more survivable. Good point. Thank you for that suggestion. And yeah, um, Citizen G, yes, very well aware that you're gas, mate. Um, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I think that's, that's one that comes up a lot and as well. It's... Um, yeah, just goes to show that we do kind of, we've said it before a few times, but we do very much take notice of trends that people are saying, well, what about this? What about that? Um, and there's another actually one that I think quickly could be a good one in the chat. Again, it comes down to business needs a little bit. But Alessio, what would you say as a game designer to the idea of a living rule book, perhaps on an app, that gets updated instead of doing FAQs and erratas per se, just the living rule book gets updated. What what are your kind of thoughts on that as a concept? Because I know where I stand on it, but it'd be interesting to see what someone that has to do it thinks. <laughs> the risk of sounding like a politician, uh, there are advantages and disadvantages <laughs> to that solution. <laughs> I remember you know talking to Jervis Johnson about this a lot, and uh, <laughs> and you know there was has some amazing advantage like you know the ideal thing you want is like a computer game where you know publish a patch the game is patched fix the bugs yay go on move on um 
And if one is very disciplined, I guess that could work. So that, there's kind of two arguments here. One is the is dangerous in the fact that if one starts to change it a lot, then you, the game you play may not be actually the game that is written because you just didn't notice the changes. Of course, I suppose you could do notifications and you know yeah. the, 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 this patch fixes the following thing, the, 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 the list of <laughs> things like, like like computer games do. Um, but who reads that stuff <laughs> anyway? So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but of course, computer games are different. Um, have you Acceptable ever read action terms fixes? and conditions. <laughs> I, 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 I am that guy that reads the right. patch notes for some games. I don't. <laughs> anyway, so the uh, there is a risk of evolving the game in a stealthier way, so that some people may actually get caught unprepared, and you know, you're playing a game and you go, "Oh, this," and you go, "It doesn't work like that." Mm-hmm. So it does. Yeah. Oh, you didn't see the change, uh, which still can happen with real FAQs anyway. <laughs> real, yeah. I mean, real with physical FAQs, with the way we do it now, it can still happen, of course, if you're not aware of the change. <laughs> I think it makes it even more difficult to be aware of the change, but that's probably me being very old and low tech. <laughs> um, and that actually brings to the other point, which is it kind of makes you have to rely on a certain level of technology. And wargaming is a very physical thing. People like their books, love their books. Uh, you know, uh, I, the, the tactile element of, of the whole hobby, etc., includes these books with you know, dusty things that get with you, stay with you. And that sense of palpable the... fear when someone's got a beat up book and it's like, what are you, what's your game? <laughs> <laughs> so, so there is an element of, I don't think we are there yet where we can just go, right, okay, so there are no physical books, it's all. Mm. It's all digital. It's all you know. Uh, it's all updates. I agree. Yeah. Uh, and uh, at the moment we have both, and because you have both, obviously you're a bit more limited in the management of, uh, of the rules. Uh, and again, that's like you were saying at the beginning. That's not really the decision that I would make in terms <laughs> of. It's again, it's a massive, massive business decision with yeah. huge repercussions. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I like physical books. I tend to. Prefer. Well, I mean, I do buy PDFs, uh, particularly comics as well, because you run out of space at some point. <laughs> but uh, uh, I mean, I have Marvel Unlimited, so <laughs> it's like yeah, it's like eighty quid a year, and you have ten ten thousand comics all the time. So, it's like, but but nothing beats a nice graphic novel that you know can hold. So yeah, uh, I um, I think I, I like it. The way it is, that again, if Warlord tomorrow would say, "Hey, we're going to go full digital because of all this," I, I, I could certainly see the advantages in terms of managing the, the text, and so that wouldn't make me go, "Oh my god, it's terrible!" I'm just like, "Cool, <laughs> you know, I, I can, I can do, live with that." I can, yeah, so you can do work that. with that, yeah. So I can work with that. Though. Um, so obviously keep them coming in the chat folks Max have we got anything else yeah we've got loads so um, this one's from Evan and this is my favourite question question in the thread because this is one that I've brought up a bunch of times and I see a couple people have uh, joined in as well Um, uh, just trying to think of the best way to start it so regarding (laughs) artillery and mortars I'd like to see them always land somewhere even if it's a miss it might be on your own troops it might be in no man's land um basically bring back the scatter dice um I'm a big fan of that one uh, (laughs) I I will be the devil's advocate here because again this has been tried and uh, it's like what about shots that miss Mm -hmm. rifle machine gun shots I fired your squad, miss. But what about the guys behind? Can I roll for them? <laughs> it's like straight shots and things like, yeah. So it's like, what happens to those shots? And you go, or is this thing only for indirect fire, mm-hmm. or is it for even direct fire? But if it's HE, but it's direct, do I have to worry where that shell lands, or just the ones that fire in the heart? So in a way, when I'm being a double yeah. it's like yeah. where you draw that line, and the line with bolt action has been drawn to. That's the role to. To hit. If yeah. you roll, if you miss, it's gone. It suddenly, as land is somewhere, is not disappearing. Is not disappearing thin air. But for the sake of this game, your shot, your mortar shell has landed out of off the table. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> behind the behind the line of hit well, your the opponent's world shoulder. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Hit you in the face. <laughs> hit the player instead of the. So the assumption is yes, it has 
scattered out mm. of the thing or landed in an empty area of the field where it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Um, and that's the assumption. And the big advantage, it speeds up the game immensely, of course. Mm. Uh, the disadvantage is less powerful, and yes, it makes those weapons less good or less risky, less fun, depending on how you <laughs> look at it. And, and some people will love that. Some people will hate that. And again, it's, uh, the decision was definitely for speed, for simplicity. You mm. missed. It's gone where it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Move on, kind of thing. Uh, and I mean, that's what each one. That could be, I was being a devil advocate, but it could be a genuine question. Would you do that just for indirect fire? I would, or but then again, you, you give for... me a template and I want to put it on the table somehow. Is the template, <laughs> is it the template? <laughs> is it the, the HP rule? Is that the indirect mm. fire rule? I'll and say. again, people will disagree on that, on yeah. where to do it, when to do it. Uh, I mean, and, and again, the. If I have a squad in front and a squad behind, some systems, even some systems that I have, mm -hmm. have the you shoot through these guys in front. I'm not shooting at them; I'm shooting at guys behind them. So what that what do these guys do? Well, they they actually offer a cover save to the guys behind. If yeah. if they fail a cover save, they get hit <laughs> instead. If every cover save <laughs> failed, you hit the guys in front. Stuff like that. Of course, you could do that, and that is the you know what happened to the spent shot. This one spent to the shots that didn't hit the target but kept going. You know, like. There's a guy behind him. <laughs> so, you know. you, 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 I think you see that a lot more in the smaller systems. You know, you kind of warband scale stuff Absolutely. and, you know, gang level stuff because you've got fewer models. But yeah, with bolt action, obviously it is trying to keep things running although again i'm gonna I'm on, I'm on max's side here give me some templates to throw around <laughs> it's it's i blame it because i started on fantasy <laughs> yeah. the templates are there uh, the question is whether the templates should scatter should they scatter only for indirect should they scatter from and so... spiny spiny requiem raised the amazing point just very quickly that would make multi-launchers evil even more. <laughs> uh, there's a couple of questions about multi launch, so let's just plow on. So I believe someone goes into this question in a bit more detail um, later, but I'm just going to extrapolate and kind of combine them all. Should vehicles move at different speeds other than what we've got? Um, I'm a pretty big fan of this. We've already got slow. I'd like to see fast. I want to see my BT7 uh, run loops around the enemy. <laughs> fast would be a cool rule to have, I agree, uh, because, yes, sometimes you do feel like this tank you know, mm. the chaffy. The Stuarts. The chaffy. <laughs> so adding a band mm -hmm. and therefore a, a, a special rule where, like you said, it would, the simplest thing would be fast and slow. Mm. Yeah, kind of mirrors to for the extremes of the thing. I, I like that and I think I would enjoy mm. that. What I don't like particularly, and I have to be honest, is the uh, difference between um, a tract and a wheel. Oh, really? I, yeah, a, a friend of mine uh, pointed out that actually at the moment, we have uh, uh, wheeled vehicles can turn mm -hmm. more easily than truck vehicles. <laughs> and he said, I was a truck commander <laughs> in the Finnish army. Uh, <laughs> and, and it was like, no, 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 no. I was in Vesa. No, I was in Thomas. Uh, anyway, a thin friend, a Finnish friend of mine said, you know, and I assure you that a, wheeled, <laughs> sorry, a truck vehicle can turn a lot shorter space than any right wheel vehicle because <laughs> it's just the mess yeah. and it does that on the spot <laughs> as opposed to going, going ah yes that's really I, obvious now that you say it but I've never to, considered it <laughs> and I went but that's supposed to be move, movement and yeah uh, yes <clears throat> yes good point <laughs> and uh, and in a way I thought I know quite a few people that don't even bother with all of that. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of thinking, should there really be a difference between that or should it be just about speed rather than maneuverability? Because kind of in the grand scheme of things, yeah. you know, a tank can do it like that, a car can do it with two <laughs> movements, you know, a wheel vehicle, car, mm. <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> armored car. But, but I'm saying maybe, again, that difference is not useful to the mm. game. A lot of people don't do it, uh, don't remember it. There's a little, you know, oh, move that, there's that. Uh, so maybe there is not, we could live with one way of moving vehicles. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. is that part of, does the game get better or worse? I think really don't think we get worse. <laughs> you know, basically, if your if you're tractor or a uh, wheel has to do with the terrain, it already does, but yeah. you know, maybe emphasize that. And not so much the way you move the vehicle, 
maybe the game gets better. Speaking of things that get missed a lot, I actually want to. This one's already came up briefly, but this is one I've seen get skip in tournaments a lot. I always forget about it myself. Yeah. Um, turret jam. You brought that up in the discussion about the casemated vehicles. Um, the amount of tournaments I've seen where you know hit turn five. That's always the one we go. Oh, we forgot to play turret jam, and you know both tanks have been pinging shots off each other. Um, personally, I think it's the four plus. A lot of people think it's too frequent, and it people like their tanks, I guess. <laughs> That's part of the reason why I said that the, trying to address the difference between mm. the Stug and the Panzer IV didn't quite work. Is because the turret rule, which in theory statistically should have. It's so often forgotten. <laughs> it doesn't do any, anything. So I was like, mm, yeah, no, that, that's something we need to look at. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so this is going to be another one where a lot of questions are being rolled all into one. Multi-launchers. Um, mm. Multi-launchers are always the uh, half the FAQ. Um, mm -hmm. So there's, there's a couple here. Um, I'll just read the first one that I can see it. Uh, give them slow ro loading rule, like the Russian uh, heavy multi-launchers, so they can only be fired every other turn, uh, raise their cost. There's a, quite a few suggestions. I, I'm not going to lose where I am in the thread to find them, but they're, they're a hot topic, and they're always uh, very everywhere at yeah, tournaments. You know the, the, the reason, I, I think again in the previous, I mm -hmm. want to repeat what I said in the previous chat, where I said, oh, Cross combat, sorry, yeah, cross combat. The fact that my solution was like, well, you die, there is no combat resolution. Kill, <laughs> go, go, go. I'm, kind of, I'm not thinking, how about what well, launches the rule is you fire twice mm. instead of once? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's it, that's it, Peter, done, <laughs> fixed. It's like, fire it and then fire it again in the same turn. Done, move on. <laughs> it's almost like you know the 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 rate of fire is mm -hmm. instead of double the mm. of a normal thing. I don't know, and maybe you roll to see like flamethrowers, but you know at some point you go oh I run out of ammunition because okay. of that. You know I don't know. But basically, what I'm saying is <laughs> could probably radically simplify it and making it not quite as lethal, and also frankly. A little bit clunky the way it works. It all be measure this, measure that. Oh, is it the, the, the so you know a, a good radical simplification of that rule that still makes them scary and powerful, mm. but not that moment are a bit clunky and a bit too good. Perhaps you know change the rule, change the point. We'll see. But yes, uh, the, I don't like the rule, even though probably everything might have it myself. <laughs> After a while, you go, yeah, mm, yes, you know, try something different. There is not quite. Yeah. In fairness, as a as a player that I love my super cheap multi launcher, inexperienced howling cow, bang, auto include in every German list for me. I actually really like the idea. It's just a heavy mortar that shoots twice. I think that's really simple because one of the things I really don't like. Sometimes I dread it, especially if I don't know my opponent. You know, if it's someone new at a tournament, right? Multi launch is firing. I hope we've both read the same FAQ recently. <laughs> Otherwise, there's going to be a fight. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But then, of course, you have to make sure it's not too good. And that's the playtesting and the balance. Yeah. And you go, like, you fire twice. Does it mean that if you're ranging, <laughs> then, then you hit twice? Or, like, yeah. or does it, uh, you know, fire three times, but they're all six? Always or five. sixes. Yeah. I don't, you know, well, well, that would be playtesting. But, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, I think we all have a gut feeling that <laughs> they need work. <laughs> they do need work. Uh, and that scenario, question was. The area of the rules that need work. Yeah. So that question was from Russ. He was one of the people who've been helping with the MMG stuff. He brings that up. And then one last one from Russ. He's asked a bunch of questions. Um, if smoke misses, how about a random roll for where it lands, like a um, forward observation uh, officer, rather than let the opponents pick? So that's basically how smoke works in uh, the mortars and artillery. I don't like smoke. <laughs> my solution would be to remove it from the game altogether and, um, if it was just me and you it would happen I, 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 I would not miss it, it. Again. I would pitch the game to the higher ups and go can we remove small rules from the game and they'll probably go no but I will go can I, can I remove that like smoke rules because I don't like uh, smoking <laughs> the game at all. And that, that's again is a mm -hmm. is when you do these things, you know, like, you know, airstrikes and smoke barrage, artillery, off, off chat artillery. Some people like some of this, some people like none of it. Uh, I don't particularly 
I don't really like the, the, the small thing, a persistent effect on the field and the way it could be abused and the slightly clunkiness of the mechanical thing. Mm. And then, then you go, what about the wind? What about... <laughs> so yeah, my gut feeling would be to remove it. But again, some people will love that. Some people will hate that. And uh, go, what are you doing? You're removing choice, et cetera, et cetera. So um, if we have to... If we did introduce some of the templates randomly landing, that would be very easy. You yeah. go, well, the smoke works the same way. If we don't, then yeah, we'll have to look at that and see whether there's a different way to do it. Uh, Marcus, do you want to do a quick Twitch check? We're about halfway through the Facebook questions now. Yes. Okay. So um, an interesting one with regards to... This is kind of almost an interpretation of how certain weapon systems get used. But uh, things like bazookas and panzer shreks, you know, they're used obviously as an anti tank weapon. They've also got quite a bit of historical precedent as being used against infantry dug in and in bunkers. Um, you know, should they possibly, should some consideration be given to them being a blast weapon um, as opposed to a simple to hit? I know which side of that I'm on because you know you're not being, we're not that granular it's a hollywood simulator it's a hollywood game not a true <laughs> simulation um but what do you what do you think as a wider question alessio to where do you draw the line with well yes this weapon could do that as well but it's mostly an anti-tank weapon say let's just keep it as that uh, we Th there's two cases, one being the shape charge weapons against uh, non-vehicles, and the other one being flamethrowers against vehicles, <laughs> where it was an endless conversation that went into history. I had people that knew their history, knew their stuff about World War II, a thousand times more than I did, having arguments, quite animated arguments. I was like, <laughs> about the argument being, for example, shape charge, Panzerfaust, Panzerschreck, Bazooka, fired at an infantry squad. Mm. Is there a point? W was it done? Uh, or people just didn't bother? Because, and again, and the arguments were, it's like, of course you didn't, because then you, some one will say, well, of course not, because you give away your position as <laughs> a clumsy big weapon thing, Is you're a team of guys that are there to take out vehicles. If you see infantry, you just hide <laughs> 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 or run away or hope that people call for cover. Maybe, you're not there to deal with infantry. Your bazooka thing, you see infantry coming, you're like, oh, we're off the other way. You know, we're not here for that. Kind of thing. So, because you're not equipped to deal with it at all. So, mm. and, and would you then say, go, oh no, I'll fire my rockets, my anti tank weapon at, at those guys that are there in the bush? Kind of thing. Will, will it do anything? And again, that you listen to the opinion and the opinion is like, oh no, it will, it's shape charge, but it still will, you know, it hits the some rocks, it explodes, shards of rocks everywhere, big bang, scary, <laughs> stunning, wounding. And people go, well done, it's in a forest and a murder will just land in the, in, in the ground and go boom, because it's a shape charge in the ground, boom, bit of smoke, <laughs> nothing. So again, you kind of go, oh, well, then it depends on the terrain you're fighting on, right? Mm -hmm. And what you hit. Uh, so that was a very difficult one, whether they should have an HE area as well, a blast area as well or not, and how big and what because again, the cha the charge is big, but it's designed to only go in one direction, mm -hmm. not to doesn't have the, the shrapnel design kind of thing, so and depends on the Hollywood movie as well it depends on all <laughs> the but certainly, so against the infantry I don't think I, I think I'm okay with the, you kill one guy really dead <laughs> <laughs> or miss, but but you brought a very good point against buildings, bunkers. Mm -hmm. That is true. That is definitely, I think, something we need to do something about because, mm. yes, you know, a, a vehicle, <laughs> okay, but a bunker, those things, you know, against the wall, if you're inside on the other side of the wall oh, and, the, yeah. and the wall gets sprayed at you, you know, with molten metal and stuff, it's not like it. That's so, a bad day. So, so it. it Yes, definitely they should be better against buildings. Absolutely. Mm. Against and whoever made that comment, thing. I'm sure they'll agree that if you, you use bazookas specifically, they are the best sniper in the game. I've killed so many officers with bazookas. <laughs> That's the thing, isn't it? <laughs> I was saying about, uh, about snipers not killing. I hit you! Four plus. Mm. <laughs> yeah, bazooka, if I get you, you're <laughs> dead. <laughs> the, amount, the amount of times I'll see a British player take a Piat team my tank is in no danger whatsoever <laughs> from that pier. I know that my lieutenant is getting splattered across the countryside. <laughs> um, uh, but 
Yeah, um, and kind of moving on another one that we kind of touched on machine guns a little bit earlier. And there's a general bit of discussion from Hasdrubal about Hasdrubal's take on it is LMGs are rubbish. Um, you know, never ta- nobody ever takes them. Now I've seen that I've seen that advanced <laughs> a lot in the community, and I I'm a no LMGs guy, but that's because I tend to play much leaner. Max is a massive LMG guy. So I Alessio, love where do you think you got the balance and the team got the balance with LMGs? Are they something that you think that's pretty good? We got that right, or is that something you're thinking mm, we could actually do with making some tweaks there? Well, uh, that goes with the same as uh, as MMGs. Certainly, I think I, I consider them the same thing. So, yes, I think the between one and two, we made them better. Mm-hmm. But they could do we getting better, rare, <laughs> <laughs> more better in the next edition. Uh, absolutely, MMGs, LMGs, both. I think they need a little something. Uh, we made them better. I mean, second edition, at least you, you have more range, you have more shots, so we kind of even out the score with the, with the, the MMGs a bit, but yeah, probably both. They still need to be made, you know, better. Mm. Cheaper, if you compare, you know, you, you have, the classic thing is I have two guys, normal squad, two riflemen, 20 yeah. points. I add 20 points, I get the shot from the machine, but I lose two rifle shots, so you kind of go Okay, <laughs> so is he really twenty points? Is he better to have you know two more riflemen or a, a light machine gun there? So they're all that considerations. Uh, we'll keep making them better, maybe with the D twos, maybe with an extra shot or two extra shots. I don't know, but yes, they will follow the the MMGs. LMGs will follow the MMGs in getting better. So, mm. so that is definitely something that's on the cards, which is mm. and I say, look, and that's a great one. You know, as soon as I said. Oh, you know, some people don't like them, some people do. The chat can't <laughs> up with, yeah, LMGs, or, you know. And it's an interesting one. Everyone's like, oh, you know, take them, you play Germans. Like, yeah, but you've seen my German list. It's how many people can I get after the giant veteran super heavy tank? Are we saying that if they were all German machine guns, then it would be worth it? So are you just saying that by adding one one shot, they will be fixed? Ah, yeah, that's what you're saying. Oh, I'll make a note. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. See. This is the real. This is the real reason we invited you all, folks, in the Twitch and the chat to come and watch this, is so we can kind of sp- scoop all of your thoughts um, for the next edition, whenever it eventually happens. Well, I, I am. I am making notes. There we go. <laughs> yeah. In fact, in fact, let me Same. just recap. We <laughs> talked about big tanks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, being not good enough. Uh, Multi launchers being a bit. Eh. Shape charges, the bunkers, yes. Yeah. Snipers and uh, uh, particularly teams being, uh, you know, the, the whole critical damage thing. Obviously, MNGs, and I don't even write that one. That's a, that's a given. MNGs, LNGs, so that applies to both. Um, anything else that we touched upon? Um... In my notes here, I have notes. <laughs> uh, I'll email you when we watch it back. Yeah, we'll um, <laughs> we, we, we do that. We'll debriefing. We'll debriefing. Um, so, another one. This is kind of, again, a comp- compilation of a couple questions. Um, and it's about one unit, so this might be a bit too specific, but Japanese spear fighters have came up a few times mm-hmm. in this uh, chat. One person saying that all Linux units should have a debuff in combat. Someone saying that one unit basically have actual base-to-base in combat, but I think it all boils down to, because both of them also reference the spear units, I know a lot of people think they're too good. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, and, uh, definitely. I think the old quantity is better as a quality. <laughs> oh, well, it's definitely that. Mm. It's that. I mean, the, the, the thing, the, the great example that clarifies that perfectly is when we had, at some point, there was a unit that could take um, um, minus... So they started the rifles, they could change the rifle. Soviet Shrafbat. And then they could be made into shirkers. Soviet blah, Shrafbat. Blah, blah, blah. They could cost a point. Oh, one the one point, point, the one point partisans. Yeah, uh, Shrafbat. Partis- I think it was partisans. But it, it was one point per model of guys with pistols. <laughs> and somebody went, I'm going to have an army of, I don't know how many hundreds of these guys. <laughs> and he ran at you with my pistols and these hordes. He's <laughs> like, you're not going to, you know, you're going to you know, go, so that's the thing about taking everything to extremes, you know. It's like, yeah, they're not <laughs> individually, they're a terrible squad, you know, you're not, you know, inexperienced and everything, and shirkers and all of that. Yeah, but I have 600 of them. It's <laughs> just like, what are you going to do? So it's like, yeah. So, yeah, that that is taking, making sure that uh, things like the spear fighters uh, are a bit too cheap 
be what they do absolutely i'm aware that they are a bit um, too good one very quickly from the chat just a quick one for you alessio just to see if this question That's is really stink. relevant to this stream um did you have any kind of input on writing U.S. military police at all? The rules for them. That look says no. Hellraiser. Very uh, specific. U.S. military yeah. police. Battle um, of the Bulge, that, I think. Yeah. Uh, Hellraiser, unfortunately, obviously, <laughs> that wasn't something that Alessio is well, intimately familiar with, I don't think. Well, well I mean, to, to recap, because maybe some people here were not in the previous chat, what I do is I wrote the core rules, yes. and then after that, I didn't write anything, I edited everything yeah. else. So in a way, nothing is my fault, except, <laughs> the, core, except the core rules. Or ev you could say everything is my fault because I <laughs> I edited everything. So what I do is I take a manuscript and try yeah. to fix mm -hmm. the rules, try to make the rules match the core rules. So that you know, yeah. because different people have different styles, different levels, different takes on things, and I try to match things. But there is just so much on that is a very Ooh, yeah. you guys help me with that, I and mean, it's just it's just so much. The more we add, the more it's difficult to cross reference and go this. Guy, this this squad, the American military police, yeah. was it another <laughs> book? Maybe that's what book. What the, yeah. what did the authors? Uh, what rules did the author <laughs> give to these guys? All right, this other guy gave them slightly different rules, but it changed the equipment a little bit. And should we be the same? Well, no, because in this sector they were different from that sector. We kind of rules yeah. people. Yeah, there's a different take on the same thing, but in different sectors. So yeah, this could be slightly different. But there's so many versions and rules yeah. that oof, it's very difficult so, to keep it all. No, the reason, tight. basically, the reason I kind of put that out there to you is because there was a couple of people, I thought that was going to be your answer for reference. There was a couple of people asking a couple of questions about very specific units. I thought it was very helpful to get, you know, from the horse's mouth, the river horse's mouth, if you will, um, exactly what it is, what relationship you have and what role you have within bolt action so that people can steer their questions more directly for you. Yeah, but in core rules is what I do, and I, I'm told uh, that when the tank comes, will be involved in doing it, or will be the one doing the, the version three. Uh, but uh, that may also not be true. Maybe you're talking to me, and will be somebody completely, somebody completely different. If you know, I have an argument with just happened tomorrow, <laughs> and we we decide we're never going to work together anymore. Yeah. Hopefully not. No, that 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 wouldn't be that wouldn't be the best case scenario there. Maybe um, it will. Maybe <laughs> who knows. <laughs> But, um, yeah, there's a lot, lots of discussion right now about light machine guns. And, yeah, it looks like, honestly, that seems to be a continental divide. The European tournament scene doesn't like them. Overseas seems to. I mean, another one that I think we, we've talked everyone else's favorite machine gun. So I'm going to go to mine. Um, just SMGs in general. Do you think they're something that need tweaking? This is just a me question. No one's really brought this up because uh, some I don't see that many on the tabletop, though. But people who love them, love them. I really like them. They've been toned down a little from the previous and from version mm -hmm. one, but when I face those squads that come out of transports and use you oh, down yeah. point blank <laughs> and then even combat, they're not that bad. I mean, they're not as good as they used to be. Mm. I think they were a bit really too good with two attacks <laughs> each. Uh, but even then, we're rolling you know, with all the roll again, the hits and stuff. So I don't have an issue with SMGs at the moment. Mm. I don't think there is an issue. But no, I don't either. I was just curious. Uh, like I said, yeah. I'm a big proponent of SMGs, but I know, again, some people don't like them, but as of everything, I suppose. <laughs> so here's, a, here's a good one, actually, very quick from Mike, uh, Mike W77. Solid or liquid, Mike? I forget which. I'm very sorry. He's heard some people criticize D6-based games and extol the virtues of D10s. Alessio, what's your thoughts on whether bolt action might work better or worse as a D10-based system versus D6? Uh, oh, yeah. that's again a huge decision on a commercial yeah. level because people already have D6s. Not everybody's got tons of D10s. Making them buy D10s could go down very well or very badly with the, with the audience. Yeah. Uh, a D10 is definitely not as common a dice as a D6. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ask on top of your army, etc., to, to, to buy a different dice. Uh, mechanically, I love D10s. Yes, as a designer, I, I mean, the, I find I find them very useful because they can do the scattered dice job as well because they are effectively little arrows. And if you <laughs> roll them, they point in a direction with the number, so they are telling yeah. you the, the direction and the number of the scatter, which is fantastic. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks to Massimo Toriani who taught me this thing. Actually, <laughs> he pointed that out for me. I was like, 
I never thought of that. <laughs> yes, D10 <laughs> is a scatter die. So very, very flexible, very, very useful die. And of course, if you spread your your statistical your your, your belt curves over over a D10 as opposed to a D6, you have advantages. Yeah. On the other end, of course, the D6 is the advantage that it's more stable, that it doesn't roll all over the place, that it's easier to, to, to manage, it's cheaper. Uh, so uh, for me, it's a very mathematical thing. I, I can make it work with the D6. I can make it work with the D10. I'll be happy to work either way. I can work with either. That's a decision that you know management will have to do uh, based on commercial decisions. Mm-hmm. Which one do I prefer? I honestly don't have a strong opinion either way. I can see the pros and cons, and yeah, maybe the D10 is gives you more fun to have with things you can do with charts and stuff. But how about the D12? I mean, the D12. Two D6. Forgotten that. Two D6. D6. D16. D16. D16 or nothing. God. D16 is yeah, but basically, I, I can work with either. Yeah. I don't have a strong opinion. I think we should stick with D6s because otherwise we'd have to think of four more orders to put on the order dice. (laughs) 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 Oh, changing the order dice as well. uh, Actually, how about rolling the order dice? I mean, that should be some mechanics where you roll the That's solo play, right? (laughs) (laughs) That's how you make the baddies go. (laughs) I've I've seen seen that mooted a few times as kind of a party game version of Vault Action. It's my it's my default when I don't know what to do in a tournament. Okay, yeah, uh, we're going to ambush this turn. Cool. Uh, <laughs> I might try that. I'll probably get better results than I normally do. So we've got a four units stand or disoriented. So where actually you have to roll the dice. Okay. Um, so this one is kind of a question that goes at the end of a bunch of other questions, most of which have already been covered. Um, so this is less bolt actually more an Alessio question, but after all these questions, he says, bottom line, I would love to know if Alessio has played Star Wars Legion. Since the designers of that were upfront about borrowing mechanics from bolt action, uh, would he consider it fair game to borrow some mechanics um, back? I just thought that was an interesting question. <laughs> no, I have not played it. Okay. Uh, yes, I, that, I did talk to the guys when I was oh, cool. on Fantasy Flight uh, working on uh, was it Dust Warfare. I mean, it's the same guy, but not this, exactly the same guy. Mm-hmm. Well, he just didn't change it. But, you know, I, I did chat with guys. We did talk about it. I mean, it's stuff that no mechanic is completely, you know, perfectly. So, yeah, no, we, we did talk about it with them. And they're the really nice guys, by the way. And so cool. it's just uh, fun talking. It's like geeks talking about rules, designers, and stuff. But no, I, I, I never played that. Uh, to be honest, I. I tend to play both tactics. The only war game that I tend to play for fun, uh, the rest tends to be work, and I never worked on that. So, <laughs> no, I have not tried it. But I would like to. But one day I will. When, when, when you know, when, when this old thing, the plague, <laughs> eases. <laughs> Um, so we'll just do one more because I see Marcus is reading one. Um, so this is from Harvey. Um, and this kind of comes back to you saying earlier, big games around the Perry's house. Um, he was wondering if Alessio has any suggestions on how to play large games of bolt action in a reasonable time frame. Bigger boards, more points, or perhaps even multiplayer battles can take forever to get through. Any suggestions on how to upscale it and uh, have good games? Well, I can tell you what we do at the Paris because that, <laughs> that, that question comes up all the time where we're going to go, you know, they, they literally would criticize the rules. Like, oh, this, this rules don't work. You know, look, and it's like, yeah, no, but that tank is so far away that I can hardly see it. <laughs> this is not what we designed. The really is game. <laughs> but, uh, so what we do normally is we double the ranges and sometimes the movements, depending on the shape scenarios mm-hmm. and stuff. But So you're, like, you're going to go, okay, let's double all the numbers, the, the, the ranges of the weapons and the, and, the, and the movement of the units. So that, again, you can cross bigger tables and in faster and engage stuff at the bigger distance because otherwise you know it's like first few turns of the game <laughs> and then <laughs> finally you start to do something in a six by four area like, what's the point <laughs> so yeah you double everything uh, and that works fine looks great because again it's probably more true to the scale of the models you know, because, mm-hmm. you know in terms of what the size of the things are um but not everybody has a 12 by 8 <laughs> <laughs> and and um uh, for speed, uh, one thing that we always do when we play with them is we tend to uh, uh, transport for squads. <laughs> they tend to very often disappear once they deploy things. 
or okay. even be used. The, the, there's, there's rules at the back of the rule book with, for units of transport, the units of vehicles. So when there's a lot of like, you know, you have platoons of troops with, with all with a transport, all the brand carriers and stuff, mm. either remove them or actually go right now. Okay, so these, these will we use one dice for these. They stay within six. The rules are in the, in the rule book mm. at, at the back. There's units of transport. So definitely that speeds up things like, you know, not as... It's not like a tiger where you know, it's a big thing, it makes a story, but you know, like <laughs> six brain carriers. Go, you know, what do I do with this brain carrier? Uh, I'll uh, just park it here and wait because I don't know what to do. So, kind of thing. So, yeah. we tend to do the transport like that. Um, yeah, that's about it. You know, again, check the appendix uh, if you haven't already. Check the appendix at the back of the rule book. Uh, there's some advice there. Cool. Um, thank you. So we've got uh, Hasdrubal. This is more of a general one kind of for me and Max, but possibly good to touch on how some of the process of getting feedback to yourself works, Alessio. Hasdrubal asks, uh, is there any way, like a link or an address, the rules feedback can be submitted to that, you know, that gets looked at? And the very simple answer is basically that's me and Max and our colleagues, the <laughs> Connors and Lorenzo. Um, so the address is really simple, info at warlordgames.com. It's our main customer service inbox, but obviously there's three of us normally on any given day monitoring it. And obviously Max and I, mostly Max at the moment, uh, Max is going to take it on the mantle of bolt action rules, man. Um, but, Somehow. You know, <laughs> it's, um, you know, it's a case of we'll see a question come in. And first thing we'll do is we'll look at it and go, can we answer this? If we can, sweet, we will. If we can't, then it gets passed up the line to Alessio. Maybe if we've got some feedback, you know, we know a little bit about the history, we think this would be good, we might pass that on. Or it might just go to Alessio, and Alessio gets these emails from us going, can you guys read a rule book? It says it right there on the page. <laughs> um, so that's how that works. Yeah, simply email that. So, for example, Chaos Core. Yeah, why don't Gebergsjäger have mountaineering? Ping it through. I agree, they probably should. But they should, uh, yes. that, that's an FAQ jobby. <laughs> And that's how the, a lot of the FAQ stuff gets formed. Um, is people send lots of things through and we pass them to Alessio. Cool. Um, so there's one here. Um, so this one's specifically about cavalry. Um, will cavalry be made easier to damage? Uh, in a nutshell, the belief is that, you know, the veteran troops, you're assuming they're using the cover better, they're uh, um, just tanking some of the better hits. Um, the argument is basically a horse is a horse. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I agree, but that's basically the crux of the question. <laughs> very, very experienced horse. Uh, no, I think it's not true that the horse is a horse. Like people, horses can be, you know, well-trained and, and used to war or not, <laughs> sadly. They have been used in war a lot, and the horse that is not trained will run off for the first shot. A horse that has been trained and is used to that will stay there and, and lie down and form a barrier and then you raise your rifle and, it and use it as cover. Yep. <laughs> and they did that. Oh, yeah. As, as awful as it is, it's like, yeah, I'll use my horse as cover. And he's trained, the horse is trained to just, you know, at the command, <laughs> sit down, do the thing and not run away, even though there's all hell breaking loose around it, which is <laughs> it's not, not many horse would do that, right? No. <laughs> uh, so, or, you know, train your horse to run into a phalanx of spiky sticks that are you like <laughs> normally you will not do that they're not stupid <laughs> but, uh, even even trained ones don't do that <laughs> so again yeah, that's something you cannot train them to do <laughs> but stuff like that so uh i think veteran cover should be better than uh, than uh, than experienced cavalry even in taking cover in the sense that that represents you know the, the riders placing the horses you know putting the horses out of the way you're yeah, not just in the middle of the road so, you know it is is that whether in general cavalry should be a little bit more fragile, I think then yes, cavalry shouldn't really be. And again, that relies in a certain way to the real line of sight thing, where actually <laughs> they would be more visible. They will be able to take less cover because you will see the models <laughs> over over the real line of sight thing. But again, since we introduced the in second edition, we introduced the more abstract approach to line of sight. That disadvantages became less of a disadvantage, so you know, it made them better. See so all these consequences of every change, and. Uh, I feel that yes, we have to make sure that they have, they feel fragile. They shouldn't be a powerful unit. Uh, you know, uh, they should be a fast, maneuverable unit. They shouldn't be a you know, <laughs> should, World War Two shouldn't be about charging guys with lances yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and the machine gun fire. Going, la, 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 la. <laughs> so 
So, Marcus, you got anything else in chat? Because we're basically oh. through the uh, Facebooks. Like, there's a couple double ups here that I've <laughs> yeah. not specifically asked, but um, we cleared we've got, it. <laughs> we've got some. Uh, we've got some kind of good discussion. A uh, little bit thin on what I call direct questions mm-hmm. that we haven't already touched. Interesting one from Spiny Re- <laughs> from Spiny Requiem. Um, with regards to things like inexperienced troops, would you consider making the weapon upgrades for them cheaper? Uh, the minus one to hit for inexperienced troops makes those weapons less useful and worth it, with the most obvious example it gives being German Volksgrenadiers, which you can give all the toys to, but they are just absolutely rubbish. <laughs> uh, the answer is definitely not, I'm afraid, because the, see the previous points when we said quantity as a quality of yep. its own. Uh, I, we think the cheap troops are good enough. We don't need to make them better, yeah. uh, is the other the other side of the equation that needs help is in the expensive stuff seems to be not quite cutting it. The yeah. big hordes of cheap stuff. And I understand the rationale that, you know, the equipment should change with the... But it doesn't. And the good thing is that it's balanced. It applies yeah. across all armies in the same <laughs> way. So it is balanced between mm-hmm. the different armies. And again, if we don't change the army books, there's no way we can do that for a start mm-hmm. because we cannot change the points value. So, no. so <laughs> can't. Uh, and no, I definitely wouldn't want to make, you know, make cheap troops better and yeah. give them more firepower <laughs> and to offset the minus one. No, 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 definitely not. No, that's a, that's a, that's a solid answer there. Um, <laughs> kind of what I was expecting, but it was, it was an interesting question to consider the rationale. Yeah, no, rationale, rationally makes perfect sense. Just I don't mm. think we want to go there. No, of course. For balanced reasons. Mm. Um, and one from uh, Hellraiser 7 Iraq says uh, the one thing they loved about bolt action when it was edition one which I never actually played was building up obviously your pins on the unit as you know they get attacked and things and then they have to count the pins while rallying while making the rally check Um, is that something that might come back as opposed to you just take your rally check at your leadership value I mean I think we'd see a lot more units disappearing off the field a lot quicker um, uh, funny, uh, funny because again, that was one of the changes that we went. We were not seeing people using the rally action. There was the, the okay. master child of the of the of the orders. Nobody ever used this. Mm. In my experience, and from the feedback we were getting, it's like it's so difficult. People are saying it's so difficult to get it off. Like mm. you know, it, you're gonna go. I need to assault. And I can spend a turn of my six turns trying to get the assault off. If I'm really lucky, yeah. I can get the assault off. And actually, in the, at the time, assaulting will also remove your, your pains, etc. So, but the action mm-hmm. would be doing something as opposed to just stay here. And the best thing I can hope for is to reduce my pinning. But I'm still here. I've done nothing. Next turn, they will shoot me again. Yeah. And I'll be so, so it was really not used. That mm-hmm. was the reason why we went away. Mm-hmm. It was like, we need to do something because other people don't use this order. Uh, hence the the way it is now yeah absolutely that may, and that that's a good way of kind of looking at it as well i think of not only going oh this thing's absolutely broken you know everyone spams it all the time we should probably take a look at it it's also we've you know spent time and effort putting this into the game and it's a part of the game but nobody ever uses that why is that what can we do to kind of get people to use that rule and use that weapon or squad or whatever more and kind of bring it in back into the fold of useful things. Mm. Mm. So, I would say, we've still got plenty of time, so obviously, if you've got any more in the chat, um, keep them coming. I, I've got another one, if uh, if I may. Um, on uh, armoured transports, um, so this is one that's near and dear to my heart, because I love my <laughs> universal carriers, I love my uh, 251 Hannah Mags. Um, at the moment, if a unit gets close to them they are destroyed just as if it was an unarmed truck um in my head i always think that's bizarre i just think just blast them with the machine gun we're a we're a bulletproof uh car um have there been any consideration was that something that's came up before i missed the beginning what what was the the unit you were talking about uh so hannah mags uh universal carrier basically armored carriers armored carriers yeah um they still die just like a yeah. truck when an enemy unit's oh, close okay, to them. The I've always thought that was a little bit odd, personally. Yeah, sorry, yeah. So basically, the difference between making a difference between a soft skin and mm-hmm. an armored vehicle, uh, mm-hmm. from the point of view of that rule about uh, expiring and stuff. Um, you're right. I mean, surely the, the, the even the crew would be a different type <laughs> of 
crew and stuff and different training, etc. Uh, the reason for that was again because um, the, during playtesting of version mm-hmm. one, uh, those were uh, abused. You know, uh. people <laughs> used them as mobile fortresses, and they were like, deploy squad, put it horizontally in front of the squad, keep firing the machine gun, and the guy said it. So it, it became the use of it was very, yeah. very, very uh, unhistorical. Yeah, it wouldn't have been right, okay. troops retreat, maybe supporting <laughs> them a bit, but where they were, you know, they became a, they were used as assault vehicles. <laughs> and for, but it was like, eh, no, we need to make sure people don't do that because it's the thing you do. You just go, oh, yeah, this is my you know, armor set yeah. thing. You, <laughs> your, your small arms can't hurt it. Ha ha. What are you going to do? No, that, know, that's super interesting because that's exactly what I wanted to do. But <laughs> it makes sense that people would exploit it because. Uh, yeah, I guess suppose you would. That reminds me of uh, I'm also a towel player in, in Warhammer, and that's exactly what people do with their transports. <laughs> yeah, exactly what was exactly what was happening, and for World War Two game, you know, towel. You think, well, I don't know how, how far well, reality, yeah. but uh, yeah, see all these transports pushing forward in front of the enemy, in yeah. front of the thing, and going behind things, <laughs> shooting them. Like, you know, kind of like, no, no, they didn't do that. They they dropped and retreated. You know, as a truck retreated really fast as a as a in fact it would have probably wouldn't even be on the table in bolt action mm. they would have retreated much before <laughs> really. and walk guys you walk from here <laughs> kind of thing because you know i hear shots in the distance you walk <laughs> we're not gonna go anywhere near that kind of thing so really possibly you shouldn't mm. even have trucks and uh and, uh, and you know and armor vehicles yeah all mm. uh, armor transports kind of be very at the edge of the table effectively kind of thing um which was why that role was mm-hmm. um, uh, one thing that I actually uh, I wanted to throw in with, uh, as we are running out of questions was the one thing we like to, to tinker with uh, <laughs> is uh, the fact that at the moment bolt action the rule book has only got the uh, reinforced platoon mm-hmm. and then we have of course armored uh, uh, tank war with armored vehicles armored platoons etc but the thought was like oh what about throwing in more type of platoons where so maybe the rule book has reinforced infantry platoon support platoon anti-tank yeah, gun platoon, or... a few more mm-hmm. which, i mean we know huge differences but the old you know in this one you get a few more mm, mortars and machine guns but yeah. less infantry mm-hmm. in this one you get a, so you get a choice a bit of not huge differences not you should but it, it gives you a, a little bit more guidance about how to structure your your army list and go a bit more flavor you know this is the engineers division <laughs> the, the genio divisions of the yeah. alpini and stuff yeah you know, whatever it, it gives you a bit more <laughs> variety without going overboard without going 17 type yeah. <laughs> not too detailed because it has to be generic enough that it works for pretty much any army mm. or it can be made to work in it. so you know a bit more of that, perhaps, to, you know, not because be cool. I mean, I've heard people complaining about the Prefer Platoon being, you know, all the armies are like follow the same pattern, maybe mm-hmm. a bit more. Mm-hmm. Something that I don't know will be interesting to hear what people think about that. Mm. There you go. <laughs> one for the chat. <laughs> and, uh, actually, a good one from the chat following, you know, we've got into talking about the army lists themselves now. And it's actually a question that I wanted to ask, or very similar. And then Mr. V, the old major, says, uh, Some people think that free units are overpowered is that mm-hmm. something yeah. that you'd be looking at changing you know in whenever you end up going to do version three and from myself as an add-on national characteristics is that something that you'd be looking to rebalance as well because it does very much seem like there are the haves and the have not marcus i thought we were going to go the whole stream without tiger fear thanks <laughs> I'm still, I'm still, we I'm were still, so <laughs> close uh, actually, uh, uh, Max, I've, I've got a confession to make here Amish, Amish Stig actually said uh, Amish Stig did say about an hour ago hey Max what about Tiger Fear and I kept it from you so as not to hurt your feelings you know I said he'd got a bag of metal he hasn't anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, well um, I mean Characteristics, army level rules are really dangerous things. Uh, mm-hmm. You risk to unbalance the, the game. You become you, you risk having the army that everybody takes or the army that nobody takes. And, and as we said in the previous chat, that bolt action does really well, reasonably well with that, with the, the fact that you kind of see a good spread of armies at tournaments. It's not like everybody takes this army and they always yeah. win. Um, 
but it's difficult. It's difficult for several reasons. One is balance, game balance, which is really treasure. And yes, I think three units, possibly some of the best special rules, the ones that make you go, yeah, this is a bit good. I mean, yeah. uh, free stuff, yes. And also, with free stuff, one should try to keep things at the same level of point values, but it would be nice if everybody had those kind of thing. You know? So something definitely that, again, if the army books are remade, we can redo, otherwise we can't. <laughs> because we can. So it's one of those, oh, what well, like is to change? Right, we have to change the army books. Why did you change the army books? Like, <laughs> it's the only way to change those rules. Uh, so um, certainly something that, always very wary of, very aware of that definitely is one thing. There's a political correctness element in it. Uh, I always make the example of the Italian army not being the most efficient army in World War II. And, uh, but you don't want to give negative rules to an army. So you try to go for our rules that can be good or bad, like the, the, the Italian rules. Uh, but you, know, uh, you risk making them not a good choice. And, the Italian army better if you're a defender and not as good if you're the attacker. That was part of the, the giving them that flavor of being kind of a very static army, kind of still fighting World War One, effectively <laughs> in World War Two. And uh, but what if you're not playing an attacker and defender scenario? And suddenly, mm. so th there is, yeah, th they are kind of worms, the natural <laughs> characteristics, and the best chance of destroying the game. <laughs> so <laughs> very careful with those. But yeah. Sorry, long, long, long answer, but yes, the three units are a bit good. I agree. Fair. I think uh, we'll round it there, unless you have any very urgent questions in the back, because we've gone for an hour and a half there. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I hope everyone enjoyed. Uh, thanks for coming on, uh, Alessio, and thanks for everyone in the chat. There was some really good questions. Uh, we got some good notes to uh, be working through. Um, so, yeah, I hope this clarified everything as well. Um, there was a bit of confusion after the last stream, so hopefully uh, we leave smarter than we entered. And uh, good luck with uh, Games About Action. More people are actually starting to play again. So, uh, with that, I bid you all a good week. Stay safe, folks. Thanks, guys.